Welcome back to Movies Outpost where we dive into the latest and greatest films. Today we're talking about White Noise, the 2022 movie that predicted the train wreck in Ohio. In this film, we follow a family as they try to navigate their way through a train wreck which emitted deadly toxins. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. The movie begins in 1984 with a movie projector turning on. Professor Murray, a professor of American culture, analyzes an American film. He demonstrates the use of explosives and car crashes that look better and better by the day. The students just sit and listen to him as he babbles on. Professor Jack Gladney, a professor in the profession of Hitler studies, a field that he founded at the College on the Hill in Ohio. Despite his specialism, he speaks no German and is quite embarrassed, so he secretly takes basic lessons from a German interpreter to prepare for a speech he is due to give at a conference. After he practices a bit, he pays the man and he goes shopping with his family. Jack is married to Babette, his fourth wife who runs yoga classes with the elderly. Together, they raise a blended family with four children, Heinrich and Steffi from two of Jack's previous marriages, Denise from Babette's previous marriage, and Wilder, their child. Jack's colleague Murray finds him at the mall and tells him he is astonished how he turned Hitler into a course and would like his help to develop a similarly niche field named Elvis Studies. At home Denise spies on Babette's belongings and finds her secret prescription stash of a drug named Dilar, a mysterious drug not in the records. She confronts Jack and says that her mother keeps forgetting things, and Dilar is not a drug known to anyone. Jack comes to Babette's defense and says that everyone is entitled to their secrets and she should be given an excuse and an explanation at least. He doesn't take his own advice, and the next day, he asks his university co-worker if she can analyze a pill if he could get his hands on it. Later on, both Murray and Jack are giving speeches in front of students as to who is more interesting, Hitler or Elvis. They talk, and as both speeches continue, Murray sits down in defeat and Jack gives such an outstanding speech that the students cannot believe it and give him a standing innovation. They then circle him in astonishment to his intellectual capacity. However, their lives are disrupted from that day forward. A train carrying explosive and dangerous chemicals is on the railroads. Simultaneously a truck driver carrying flammable material has been drinking and is not in the best state to drive. His slow reflexes causes him to run right into the oncoming train. It causes the train to come flying off the tracks and each carriage comes to a halt. The material inside the train then starts leaking, and with the flammable ingredients from the truck, it causes a major explosion. The smoke then rises so high it begins making its way into Ohio. The issue with the smoke is, it has mixed with the chemicals and is both dangerous and deadly if inhaled. Things get serious as hazmat suited units begin arriving and we hear cop cars, helicopters and sirens. Heinrich looks from binoculars at the smoke, and Jack goes upstairs to see what is going on. He looks to see a black cloud, and they notice emergency services are not going near it. That night while eating dinner, a siren starts going off, and when Heinrich goes out to investigate, he hears this. Evacuate all places of residence. Cloud of deadly chemicals. He runs back in, and they all immediately start packing their belongings and rush into the car. This airborne toxic event forces a massive evacuation, which leads to a major traffic jam on the highway. Some idiot drivers didn't wait and try to cut through which causes an accident. They seem to have died from the flip, and as we progress, we see a post-apocalyptic-like scene falling into place. Jack then makes his way to a gas station to refill his car, unknowingly he is inadvertently exposed to the cloud as seen from behind him. When they continue their drive, they look up to the smoke cloud with a lightning storm behind it. The scenes are outstanding and scary at the same time. People start getting out of the cars from being mesmerized from the lightning-filled smoke cloud. The people of Ohio now feel it's the last of us type of situation and go into survival mode. The family and numerous others are forced into quarantine at a summer camp. Murray supplies Jack with a small palm-sized pistol to protect himself against the more dangerous survivalists in the camp. Babette takes her pill, and everyone goes to sleep. The next morning Jack gets woken up, and families begin yelling and screaming as the smoke is coming towards them. Chaos ensues when multiple families desperately try to escape the camp. Jack becomes separated from his family in the chaos and even crawls at one point but manages to make it to the car. He sees a car that says gun control is mind control and follows their lead to escape. They drive behind them in a forest-like area but end up losing them from sight. The Gladneys almost make it out but ultimately end up with their car floating in the river. They try multiple times and the car turns on. They floor it and manage to get out of the river back into the bushes and get to an open field. They manage to find a road and line up in a car queue to later arrive in Iron City. They have to hang out in a shelter-like place for the smoke to clear the air. During this time, they encounter a man who rants about the lack of media attention on the evacuees and becomes annoyed of how they are saying the smoke is not that toxic. After nine days, the family manages to return home. 
However, since Jack was briefly exposed to the chemical waste, he doesn't feel too well and goes to a doctor to get some tests. They send him to more treatments in the meantime, but pretty much everything has returned to normal, except for Babette. She has become pale, lethargic, and emotionally distant from Jack and the rest of the family. Jack now believes the pills are a major problem, and when he finds her little hiding spot, he calls the doctor and asks if he has prescribed Dilar to her. When he says no, he takes it to his friend from university to see what it is. She begins talking gibberish, and when Jack tells her to speak English, she tells him it's a psychopharmaceutical drug that interacts with the human cortex and it is not on the market. Soon afterward, Jack is sitting in the dark and confronts Babette. She admits to having joined a shadowy clinical trial for a drug to treat death anxieties, and when she was cut from the trial for Mr. Gray, she began selling everything so she could continue getting the drug. Jack asks exactly how it was getting rid of the death anxieties, and when she began spitting out the details, he becomes intrigued by the idea. The conversation turns emotional for Babette, as she knows she is in the wrong, but the addiction got the best of her. Jack asks her to stop, if not for his sake, then for her daughter's sake, and she agrees. The next day, Jack begins tripping out on himself, and his anxiety is getting the best of him. That night, he asks Denise for the Dilar bottle that she hid, but she reveals she threw it away days earlier. He goes straight to the garbage and starts digging through it, but coincidentally, finds an ad in the newspaper for Dilar which says, afraid of death. This prompts him to retrieve his pistol and get revenge on Mr. Gray. The next day, Jack has his big presentation. He's having a heat flush but manages to pull off the performance in fluent German. He then goes to his wife and tells her to not wait up for him today, and he needs the car. She says she has classes and Jack tells her alright. He then goes to Murray and asks if he can borrow his car for the night. He gives him the keys and the professor turns into a crook and tracks Mr. Gray down into a motel. Jack walks in and sees pills all over the floor. The man just talks to Jack as if he is his friend. He tells him how much he would like to purchase. Jack plays along because he's trying to find his inner strength to kill the man that almost ruined his family. Jack finally pulls out his pistol and the man runs to the bathroom. He pulls the trigger but just hits his shoulder. Jack thinking he is dead, tries to frame him and cleans the gun then puts it in his hand. Babette then comes inside knowing Jack's plan for the night. Mr. Gray then wakes up and pulls the trigger but misses. Jack regrets his decision of being a murderer and tells his wife to grab his legs and wants to save him. He takes him outside and Mr. Gray sobers up not remembering anything. After Jack and Babette convince the confused Mr. Gray that he is responsible for his injuries, they take him to a nearby church hospital. Weirdly enough it is run by German atheist nuns, there the couple also reconcile with each other. The next day, the Gladneys wake up and are all happy to be alive and be with each other. We can see the smiles on their faces, and the last scene is them all entering the shopping mall with one another. I would greatly appreciate a like and a subscribe, and if you didn't enjoy it, make sure to hit the dislike button twice. Thank you, until the next one.